We're back here again with Blake, and uh, we thought maybe we'd take a little tour of your equipment, Blake. What do you think? Let's do it. it it's going to be very different for your viewers because they've seen all your nice, clean, modern stuff, and ours is a little older and a little rougher and been repaired a few more times. Well, maybe so, but it's uh, also bigger. A little. And it's actually very purpose-built equipment. So and let's let's take true. a look. Where do you want to start? Let's start here. Okay. This is the tractor. This is a 2001 John Deere 5320. Uh, it's about 64 horse at the engine, 60 at the PTO. Been a good solid tractor. It's got almost 3,700 hours on it and all I've ever done to it are a water pump and an alternator and a couple of, you know, miscellaneous oil leaks, but... Did you buy this new? I did not. Okay. I bought it used. I buy everything used, mm -hmm. but uh, I bought it used from a John Deere dealer in Tennessee. The loader was actually destroyed. I had to rebuild the front end of the loader. Oh, really? I uh, ended up converting it over to the JD Global Quick Hitch system as opposed to the standard John Deere Quick Attach. Okay, license. so when it came on, it did have the JD QA, the Correct. regular one, just a little bit bigger brother to what my tractor was. The, the JD QA is exactly the same for the 1 Series through the 4 Series, but when you go to the 5 Series, the bottom pins are or a little lower. further down and they might be a little further out. I can't remember. I think we see some attachments that have both pins right. on them. So a, lot of play, a lot of attachment builders will build them that way, but if you've got a one series, it's two. those big attachments. I mean, yeah, yeah. They're, they're strong, but do you really need to pick up that right. much excess weight? Right. Now, what, what uh, five series tractor would this kind of map to in the newer? Um, this would be right around a 5075, I think, maybe a 5085. Okay. Because I'm that, that's looking at PTO horsepower. Right. And this one is about 60 at the PTO, and I think both of them fall right in that range as well. Okay. So I think you were saying off camera that uh, you may be getting ready to sell this. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I bought this in 2012. It has been an absolutely excellent tractor. It's just too small. I know that might be sounds a little funny to say. A five series is too small? Right. <laughs> but it, I'm, I'm the guy in the comments that's always saying, this looks like a great reason for you to buy a bigger tractor. Yeah, but you are always saying that. I am. Maybe I should buy this tractor right here and haul it back home. I don't think it's going to fit in the plane. Do you think, uh, I think the finance committee's out of earshot, so. She is outside. Maybe we can make a we deal. got a shot. <laughs> no, this, this is a great tractor, but uh, it's right on the edge of being able to do everything we need to do. For moving okay. round bales and that kind of thing, it's fine. But we've got an 8-foot snowblower and a 16-foot pull-type swather. Uh, some people call them wind rowers or mower conditioners. Mm -hmm. And it's right on the ragged edge of running that stuff. It can do it, but it's, it takes everything it's got to do it. So you're, you're trying to sell this. What are you, what are you trying to ask for? It? I am probably going to list this in the ballpark of $22,000. Okay. But it does have a loader. It's not on it right at the moment because it, it's, I was getting it cleaned up and getting everything ready. And okay. it's just easier to do that with the loader off. Sure. Uh, we'll put it back on today. Uh, the loader is self-leveling. Uh, oh, okay. That's a nice feature. It has a hydraulic top and tilt link on the back. Oh, we'll check that out in a second. The seat is beautiful. The seat is brand new. Okay. Actually, I have a video of it on my channel. Just a few weeks ago, I tore the rock shaft housing and the transmission cover out of this tractor and resealed all of that. Okay. It's had all the maintenance done within the last couple of weeks. Oil change, transmission fluid, hydraulic oil, the whole nine yards. Wow. But we're looking for something close, something obviously with a cab, because blowing snow with an open station tractor and a rear three-point blower is no fun regardless, but out here during the winter, we'll get winds of 60, 70 miles an hour. Oh my goodness, sometimes right in your face. Right, and blowing snow in that out in the open. I, I plowed it that way the first year we were here, and it was miserable, but it can be done. But we're looking for something with a cab and something a lot closer to about 100, 110 PTO horsepower. Yeah. Did I hear you mention off camera that you might be betraying the, the nice green color coming up? Uh, yeah. I don't want to, but. Okay. It, well, I don't know. I'm not sure we can still be friends. Oh. <laughs> no, I love my deers, but the problem is so does everybody else. And the tractor we're looking for would roughly be the equivalent of a John Deere 6420. Yeah. And the average price I'm seeing on those in our area is between 45 and 50,000 for a used one. Yeah. And I can get a comparable New Holland for about 30. 
So as, as much as I do love the green paint, that $15,000 carries a lot of weight. Interesting question, just hypothetical. You're, you're a big time contributor to Green Tractor Talk. Argue against yourself for a moment. Why would you say that someone should buy the 6420 instead of the New Holland at that, at that price? Is there any excuse whatsoever or is it just people in love with the paint? There, is, there, there are a lot of reasons. Some of them relate to the specific tractor, but a lot of it relates to the John Deere dealer network. I've got a John Deere dealer in Cheyenne. I can be there in 30 minutes. There are three or four, maybe even five more scattered within an hour's drive. Mm -hmm. Our closest New Holland dealer is an hour and a half away, and there are only two of them in the state. Uh, with John Deere, you can go somewhere like Green, uh, Green Farm Parts and order your parts online, have them shipped directly to you. There may be someone that does that for New Holland, but I haven't found it yet. Yeah, I think you hit on what I was, what I was really headed toward. By the way, coupon code? TTWT. At greenfarmparts.com, you can get a very nice discount. Not only can you have green farm parts and have it shipped right to you soon, you can find the part numbers for any John Deere piece that, of equipment. That's where I was about to go next. The JD parts system that they provide online is basically the same system they have at the dealership. There are a few little differences, but not many. Right. But you can pull up practically any machine. I mean, we've got an old 1950s uh, 14T square baler, and I can go look up parts for it on JD parts. And if it's a good part number, which surprisingly a lot of them still are, you can order it from Green Farm Parts and have it shipped right to you. Yeah, now you won't be able to get every part. I think that's what you're alluding right. to. Just because you know a part number and you say, this is what I want, they don't make everything anymore. But even having that part number, a lot of times, even if you can't buy it directly from Deere, you can search on it and, and well, you can begin I, to... I went through that exact situation uh, about a year ago. A friend of mine had a John Deere 650, an older little sure. subcompact that's roughly the size of a modern day one series, and he had an accident with his PTO shaft and ended up busting the rear housing area of the tractor. And unlike this one, it's not just a removable plate, he actually broke the main transmission casing. Every single part number we needed came up on JD Parts, even the housing. Okay. And you consider this tractor's 25 years old, yeah. it's well out of, you know, out of the mainstream. So for parts to be even still listed is really nice. And I was yeah. able to order literally every part except for the casting from Green Farm Parts. Okay. And the casting, because I had a part number, I had a casting number, I was able to look around and find one in a scrapyard. And they shipped it to us, and I was able to put it in with new bearings and everything and get the tractor back together when, you know, a lot of tractors that old, if you bust a cast part, part of the frame, you're just out of luck. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. And I think that really, those reasons right there are what justify the price right. of the higher-end equipment. Absolutely. But having said that, it makes sense when there's that much delta in price to take that risk. Yep. Uh, especially when I uh, that how old is the new Holland that you're considering? Uh, it's a 2004. Yeah, so see, even even then, 2004, you're going to be able to buy parts for that for the next 15 years right. with, without any issue whatsoever. Right. And after 15 years, you will have gotten your money's worth out of that Absolutely. tractor. You mentioned Green Farm Parts. I did. But the folks at Green Farm Parts wanted me to present you this really? incredibly masculine. <clears throat> this is nice. Courtesy of Tractor Time with Tim. Well, thank you very much. And remember, folks, coupon code TTWT at checkout at Green Farm Parts. I wish I'd had that when I spent all that money there. I can do this. It doesn't turn near as short as a one series material. Now, he says the way the power reverser works is I don't even have to hit the clutch, and I can just go like this. Now, this is a little more involved than swapping the loader on Johnny. What we're going to do is take our hydraulic lines here. That part's no different than Johnny. This is no different. They come over, go between the loader mass and the floorboard, plug them in down here at the bottom. You're going to get oily. <laughs> you can see I've just got the standard John Deere caps and they're all faded. This is supposed to be 
orange like mm -hmm. that. You can see there's still a little color on the inside. But uh, Kenny over at boltonhooks.com, he sells some really, really nice hydraulic caps that don't have this problem. They don't fade over time, huh? They don't. All right, now your loader joystick is locked out right now. Loader so we're joystick, gonna, that's we're gonna flip this over so the joystick okay. will move. Go ahead and start the tractor. And then what are we gonna do? Then you are going to lift up. And when you lift up, this cylinder is gonna extend and it's gonna push this anchor right here down into these lower hooks. Okay. You'll curl forward. Oh, I curl, okay. When you curl forward, this mast here is gonna tip back and that's gonna let us slide this top pin through this hole, which is this hole. Okay, okay, we can do that. It will push the tractor, that's okay. You just kinda have to play with it until it lines up. It's not as simple as the one series, but it's not that bad. Well, compared to what they were a few years ago, this is really nice. It is. Now, uh, hold on to that pin. Okay. What you'll see is your side has to go in first. See this round tube in the middle of the loader? Yeah. If you look at the back of that parking stand, there's that little notch. Yeah. That notch, you've got a tab over there below that yep. tube. That notch goes over that tab. Catrill, do you understand what a self-leveling bucket is? Well, I mean, like if your tractor's on a hill, would it just, you know, naturally make the bucket level? Or maybe a better idea, if you if you raise up the the, the arm things, uh -huh. the bucket will stay where it is. Like when we raise ours up, we have to like raise up a little bit and then like tilt the bucket and then like raise up a little more and tilt the bucket. You have got it perfect. So to prove that, sit down on the front of the bucket. Now, my question is, Catrille, does that lift higher than Johnny? I don't know. Is that you up there? Uh, yeah. Christy, we've got to have one of these. We could get all the way to the top shelf. I hear he's trying to sell it. Perfect timing! I didn't hey, I've, say... I've got pallet forks over there. I didn't say you could buy it. I said I hear he's trying to sell it. Well, if he needs to sell it... And, and I'm need stuck to. in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the deal is I only get you back to Earth if he buys it, maybe. <laughs> is that the deal? I like where this is going. Did it <laughs> Did it stay level, Catrille? It did stay level. Isn't that cool? That's a lot better than ours. Krista, now you would have to admit. I have to admit that is better than ours. But it won't fit in the shed. They make bigger sheds. Are you going to keep talking or are you going to let me down? How are you doing with that, Catrille? <laughs> I'm fine. A good thing I'm not scared of heights. How, how high will this thing go? Um, whatever that is. Catrille, how high is that? Oh, uh, 50 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to the pen, it looks like it's probably 10, 11 feet. I think that's about right. From the one series, the two series, even the three series, it's marginal. Yeah. The lift height just marginally goes up with each one. Now make sure you put her down without dumping it. Why? Well, I, I don't have to worry about that. Why? <laughs> because it's self-leveling. That's right. Bingo. Do they make a self-leveling one for the, the 1025R? They do not. Hey, notice I'm not standing under the bucket. No matter what it looks like here, I'm not standing under it. In Australia, they are sold as self-leveling bucket. Australia has a law that requires all buckets to be self-leveling up to a certain height, I think, but theirs are done differently. There's a self-leveling option for the one series over there, but it's the same loader we buy here. It just has a different hydraulic control unit. Oh. So as the bucket is lifting, it's only self-leveling, I think, for like the first three or four feet. 
Oh. Uh, the reason that they don't offer a self-leveling bucket in the U.S., Christy, is because it's so heavy. Correct. Oh, see, it's okay. if, if you go around to the side, you'll see that there has to be double bars on each side. The and framing is heavy. The framing has right. to be much heavier be, just because of the way the geometry works. Hey, Catrill, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good. You look like you're up in some, like, carnival ride that yeah, most parents would look at and go, hmm. Yeah, I mean, good grief, Catrill. Most people pay $3 for that. That's right. And you've got to stay up at the top longer than most. See how these are made? Yeah. And the, these are made like this. And so then when you lower it, they go together. The geometry works such that it keeps it level. I think we gotta have one of them. That is very nice. Put hooks on it from Ken's hooks, put shackle mounts in it from Ken's hooks. Now you had to go with the weld on hooks because I did. because <laughs> under here we've got this has got double thickness. This is that HD bucket, they talk a lot about that. The heavy duty bucket has an actual tube here instead of just thin right. thin steel. So the bolt-on hooks just will not work with this type situation. Now, how long do you think it would take me to drive this home? It'll run approximately 18 miles an hour. So a week and a half or so. Probably. That really depends on whether you're welcome at home if you take it home. It's 73 inch bucket so I can sleep in there if I need to. I was really surprised to see how high this loader lifted though. This feels like a loader that would fit on a even a six series tractor. It, I mean, it just seems bigger right. than the tractor. This thing's got a lot of strength. It does. It's yeah. got a lot of years left in it too. I mean, they just aren't going to go bad. They'll run forever. That's the thing. It's a 2001-2002 model. It's That was right at the beginning of this series, so the, the year is a little ambiguous. But it's a modern enough tractor. It's got all the features you're going to find on a new one and a lot less electronics. Now, I think we got to have it, Christy. I just don't see how we can even leave today without getting it. I'll take the Explorer keys. Uh oh. Let's see, what other? Keep working on this. I don't really think I, I. don't really think we've got her convinced, but maybe. Maybe by the time we're done. Yeah, maybe. We'll keep working on it. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that kind of does it for the the tractor, and um, we'll have to say our farewells to the tractor fairly soon. If you're interested, you can go look at uh, Blake's channel. Do it. Guy N W Y. Again, for those of you with Mahindras, that's Wyoming W Y. <laughs> Yeah, Hope I can put a link right in the description to your channel and um, on the end screen as well. I can even do Perfect. that. Thanks for joining us for this video, Blake. Oh, this has been a blast. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.